My name is Manuel Barros. I am a project manager at Fundación Ciudadano Inteligente, which means Smart Citizen Foundation. We are a Latin American, a Chile-based organization aiming to strengthen democracies all over our region, that is Latin America. And also I am the manager of the project Abre, uh, which I believe Beth has told you something about it. Um, Abre is a project that seeks to install in municipalities of Latin America capacities to facilitate participatory processes with the objective of involving citizens in four different stages of municipal actions, public policies, and the decision-making processes in general. For this process, after more, much research, we decided to use the console software in which the CIDE Madrid is mounted. I think you, you all know what the CIDE is, but we did a lot of modifications to it. Like you have mentioned- We're all very of, new to the field, so don't assume any knowledge. Okay, okay. the CIDE, it's a platform uh, developed in the Madrid uh, mayor office, which is something like crowd law. Um, citizens and neighbors of the city can propose uh, policies, actions, and things that uh, then their government can take and then apply or do it. So we, we took that platform, the, the software code, but we did it a lot, we did to it a lot of modifications. Like you have mentioned several times, Beth, in Ciudadano Inteligente, my organization, although we value the initiative of Madrid, we believe that the CIDE is not fulfilling its objectives. Uh, therefore, we gave the project a twist and we projected as a platform to involve the neighbors of a territory in a specific challenges. That is to say, that is to say, the municipality opens a challenge and depending on this, the neighbors participates in the phases of first, uh, ideation and raising proposals, second, design and preparation of the final prototype workshops, third, implementation and follow-up, and finally, the fourth stage, which is evaluation of the process. So it works like this. First, we establish a work agreement with the municipality, which triggers the first two tasks on their part, which are define the two teams, both the support one and the territorial one, and B, define the challenge in detail. On our own, we set up the platform and prepare material for the trainings and activities during the process. Then it comes the training sessions. Two training sessions are held for the municipal teams in which the process is, is, is explained in detail and tools are delivered to carry it out. Then the process is started for, with the first stage, uh, the pickup of proposals, then the design workshops. Uh, after the stage of the proposal of proposals is concluded, the neighbors are summoned to two or more design workshops in which the most voted proposals are collected and the final proposals, proposal to be implemented is co-designed. Then it comes the implementation phase, uh, which is variable depending on the nature of the project, uh, but it contemplates collaborative actions with the neighbors and also includes municipal reports and neighbor, neighbors' counter reports. And finally, evaluation uh, through a simple online form. As you can imagine, it is a much more complex project than initiatives like the CIDE in Madrid, which is just a platform where citizens can uh, create proposals. Uh, but we believe that given its characteristics, Abre is in a better position to fulfill its objectives, which are first, facilitate new spaces for citizen advocacy at a local level, and second, contribute to the reconstruction of citizen, citizenship, citizenship, citizens, citizenship and government 
relations based on trust. So given its complexity, Avre not only consists of the installation of the platform, along with this, and as it was mentioned, our team conducts, conducts a series of training and technical advisory services. The main objective we have when offering this project is to install the capabilities so that governments can continue to implement the process in different challenges through the year or the government period in general. So that's ABRE in general. So if you want to do a tour through the platform right now? Yeah, I think we should do a tour and then, um, I mean, people can interrupt with questions, I assume, but why don't we start a tour and then we'll um, see what questions people have. Okay. I'm sending my questions to the chat. Oh, okay. That's another good suggestion. Don't worry about them, Manuel, at the moment. We will, uh, people can, we always, you can start gathering your questions in the chat and then we can feed them to you later. Okay. So, do you see the platform? Am I sharing? Yes, yes okay. you are, yes. So, this is the platform uh, we developed for the first pilot of the program in a municipality called Peñalolén, as you can see there. This is the Peñalolén version of Abre. Um, at home... So first tell us something about Peñalolén, size, uh, okay. what kind of a municipality is it? What's the sort of major characteristics of this as a place? We started with Peñalolén because uh, we knew it at first that we needed to link with a government that has some experience in innovation, technology, and that kind of stuff. And o sea, Peñalolén, it's one of the biggest uh, governments, local governments in Chile. It has, even though it has a small population because we have a lot of municipalities with small population, uh, it has how can I say this? 2,050, 250,000 people? Let me, I don't know if that's correct. Let me. Yes. Um, and um, their major is a woman uh, very interested in innovating uh, and democracy or e-democracy initiatives. So we saw in Peñalolén a, a nice or, or, or maybe the, the best ally to do this. So we installed this platform in their servers and we have all experience with one pilot. We are doing a couple of a couple of more right now, but this is the first pilot. Uh, at home, you can go to the challenges. Uh, there is only one challenge opened by the, the government, which is um, a challenge that pointed to the redesign of a large park in a specific neighborhood of the city. We choose a small neighborhood to pilot the characteristics of the pilot to do it uh, in a controlled uh, context. So you can go to the, the challenge and you can see immediately the proposals that neighbors did. The first one, the first ones with this beating heart are the most voted ones. Um, <clears throat> are the ones that obtained the most votes from the neighbors. Those three proposals were the ones that later passed to the design workshop. First, we projected, projected this challenge as a one proposal challenge. So one proposal will win and then pass to the workshops. But uh, as we were receiving proposals, we understood that all these proposals uh, were complementary. So we took the first, the three first ones, and uh, we 
took them to the workshops where all of its characteristics were bring together to build the final prototype that municipality is implementing in a couple of weeks, so in a couple of months. So you can see the proposals, you can enter to the details of the proposals. There is a title, uh, date, the name of the author, uh, a small, a brief description, how many neighbors had uh, support this proposal, and an explanation, which I believe it's kind of messy, but we're trying to, we're working on it. Then you can see comments uh, made by other neighbors, and you can go back to the list of proposals, and if you click on the title of the challenge, you can see the, the whole details of the challenge. It's title, description, uh, an action call, or call to action, and uh, another explanation. The, the budget, the community affected, there you can see that the process of a proposal reception is closed. Then why it's important, this challenge, its causes, restrictions, and etc. So that is the proposal part. Then you can go to the follow-up uh, part here in the, in the menu. And you can go through the four stages of the process. First, the proposal. You can see the three proposals that, that won and passed to the workshop, to design workshops. Then you can go to the design phase. And where you can see what happened in the two design workshops, how many assistants, uh, the date, what happened, some pictures of the activities, and then, not developed yet, the implementation and evaluation phase. This is where the municipal reports were, uh, it, are going to be Put it and then this is where people uh, will evaluate the process through a simple online form. So that is the first version of Abre, and we are now uh, improving it to host more challenges. And you know, uh, once the Peñalolén municipality starts implementing the redesign of the park. We, are, we will open these two phases. Now uh, we are having conversations with another municipality called Independencia, which is a smaller one. Uh, and we are now designing uh, another pilot, the second iteration, um, that will tackle the problem of immigrants in, in, the, in that government, in that territory. Independencia has one of the biggest immigrant population. And there is a lot of problems, as you can imagine, in this troubled world. And immigrants are not always welcome, and sadly. And uh, they're trying to bring local and foreign communities to design together uh, a solution to this problem and some inclusion. They're trying to build an inclusion policy. So they're, they're going to use this process as well. To find out more about how cities and states are using CrowdLaw, please visit thegovlab.org or check out crowd.law.